Hello everyone. Anything to anybody? Hello. Okay, so as I mentioned in the intro, the first five, maybe 10 songs, I'm not going to rank them because I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't, uh, two, two reasons. I couldn't really decide which one I like best. And plus it's not in the top 10 or top 15. So does it really matter which one's 25 and which one's 22? I don't think it does. So I'm just gonna start just from the list here. So this song, almost every song you're gonna hear on my list is credited to Mick Jagger and uh, Keith Richards. Now this one is Fool to Cry. And this was written in, well, I'm not sure when it was written, but this was released, I believe, in 1976. And from what I read online, it was just after Mick Taylor left the band. Now, Mick Taylor was their lead guitar player. And the other thing is, is, and if I am critical of anything or if I'm harsh about something or if I put something down, it's not really a knock. It's just because they're so good and so great that obviously there's going to be sections and times where it's a little bit less great. And Keith Richards, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not an expert guitar player, so I'm not sure how he ranks among the greatest guitar players, but from my understanding, Mick Taylor is considered a better guitar player. And Mick Taylor was able to, especially live in concert, Mick Taylor was able to deliver performances that couldn't be delivered by the other members of the band. And so when he left the band, I think it was, uh, it's like, I, th I think it was a loss. And I think that they struggled trying to find somebody to replace him. And I think they eventually decided they couldn't really replace who he was. So they ended up going with Ron Woods as his official replacement. And I remember reading Keith Richards saying they were going to go with an American from Alabama who actually, I think, plays on Fool to Cry, if I remember correctly, the guitar player. And they didn't go with him because he was from the United States, and they went with an Englishman. Not to say Ron Wood is terrible. I mean, he's had a long resume of success in his career, and he looks like a real good guy and a character from from what I've seen over the years. So I think that there is probably the a fit. And when you're in a band or a group, that counts for something, especially if you're the Rolling Stones and you've been together for 15 years, 20 years at the time somebody new comes on board. So, so this was off the Black and Blue album. And I'm pretty sure I also read that uh, this is not like Mick Jagger or Keith Richards' favorite record. In fact, the only song I think they, they've put on their Greatest Hits album was Fool to Cry. So let's get right into it. Nicky Hopkins was on this as playing the piano as well. Mick Jagger played electric piano, I believe. All right, so here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
1976, Fool to Cry. Not a bad song, but this isn't one that I would listen to very often. A lot of people probably have never heard Fool to Cry, but this next song, anybody who listens to music will have heard of this song. And again, this is something I'd listen to, but it's not one of my favorite songs. However, the saxophone player who's on Emotional Rescue, Bobby Keys, he's on this song as well. I, I read a little bit about his history with the Rolling Stones. He's the, he's a sax player. And he became very good friends with Keith Richards. And then later on, he became friends with Mick Jagger. But when he was touring with them in Europe, I guess, uh, I don't know if it was the same tour, but on one of these tours, him and Keith Richards took a giant TV and threw it out of the hotel window and in another incident he ended up ordering Dom Perignon which is 100 bucks a bottle or whatever it is and filling a bathtub and taking a bath in it and I guess that infuriated Mick Jagger so much he was sent home the next day and replaced and he wasn't allowed to well he was basically 
dead to Mick Jagger at that point. And I think it took several years. And then Richards and uh, Bobby Keys started getting back in touch. And, and uh, Keith Richards bought him a plane ticket, said, hey, get over here and just come on stage and play it, own the song. And I think it was a, a rehearsal for Brown Sugar on one of their tours. And when Mick Jagger heard it, he turned around and there's Bobby Keys and he looked at Richards and Richards is like, come on, he's the best. And I think, I think this guy was on tour with the Stones after that until he, he died. He died fairly young from uh, cancer or diabetes or whatever it was. So the life of a rock and roll player, I guess. Okay, let's get into it. This is, uh, let's see, 1971, Brown Sugar. Keith Richards, I assume it's Keith Richards, his guitar is going to grab your attention, and that's what pulls you in. <laughs> Well, sorry for any delays. I only have satellite Wi-Fi out here. I'm on a small village on the Pacific Ocean. Hey, doing the best I can with what I've got. But uh, wow, you know, over the years I've had, I've listened to different albums and you know, they sound, eh, you know, it's like they sound kind of just boring just routine, like sounds like they've probably 
gone through rehearsal a thousand times and are tired. And then you hear a live version like this. It's just incredible. There are certain groups and certain artists over time where that's true. And even though it's not the Rolling Stones, I remember growing up, my parents were big Neil Diamond fans. And so we had their, his uh, Hot August Night album, which is by far his best album, in my opinion. And if you listen to the songs from Hot August Night in the studio version, I won't say they're terrible, but I wouldn't. But the live version of that concert, incredible, incredible. I mean, a moment in time, right? Where, you know, it's like a, a sports game, you know, the World Series, you know, bottom of the ninth, base is loaded, you know, somebody either steps up, the pitcher, pitcher steps up, strikes you out, or the hitter steps up, gets a hit or a home run and wins the game. And so it's that way with live music. And there's so many variables that can go into a good, good concert, you know, where they're like, hey, uh, hello, Detroit. And they're in, you know, Chicago. Okay, so that was Brown Sugar. That was a live concert from Texas in 1972 is what the video said if that was coming through. The studio version of Brown Sugar is okay, but that live version, far better, far better. You can see the energy in Mick Jagger as he's singing that. Looks like he was having a lot of fun, you know with the guys on the stage. Next song, well, this is another one that people are gonna know, so I won't even announce it. I'll just go right into it. The song is from 1966. So one of the early ones, here we go. She would never say when she came. Yesterday don't matter if it's gone. While the sun is bright, or in the darkest night, no one knows. She comes in by. Question why she needs to be so She'll tell you it's the only way to be She just can't be changed To a life where nothing's gained and nothing's lost such a cost. Goodbye, baby Tuesday. Look at me, my name is When you change with that brand new day, soon I'm gonna miss you. And there's no time to lose. I heard a lose. Cash your dreams with food to slip away. I'm dying out of time. Lose your dreams and you may lose your mind. And life on the coin. Tuesday, 
I'm just going to play a little bit of the studio version because the studio version has a little bit of a different instrument. She would never say where she came from. Yesterday don't matter if it's gone. While the sun is bright Or in the darkest night No one knows She comes and goes Question why she needs to be so free. She'll tell you it's the only way to be. She just can't be chained to a life where nothing's gained and nothing's lost. At such a cost. Goodbye, Ruby Tuesday. Who could hang a name on you when you change with every new day? Still, I'm gonna miss you. Definitely sounds like a song from the 60s. In fact, in some ways, it sounds like a Beatles song to me. I think this is the only song, if I remember correctly, this is the only song on my list or in this video that wasn't written by Mick Jagger or Keith Richards. Singing, singing time on my, on my side, the Rolling Stones. Is on my side. Yes, it is. Is on my side. Yes, it is. Now you always say that you want to be free, but you know I'm running back. Yes, it is. I said time is on my side. Yes, it is. You're searching for good times, but just wait and see. You know I'm running back.
Yeah, so that was song was recorded in 1964, Time is on My Side, one of their earlier songs. And they were starting to get pretty good success at that point. 65, 66 is when they started to become the Rolling Stones. When this song came out, they didn't even write it, like I said. They weren't writing their songs. And so they were just one of another band in the 60s at that point, but starting to make their move. All right, this next song, another song you're going to know. You know, I, I grew up with all these songs on the radio, too. But uh, maybe it's because they were before me that I don't feel that attachment to these songs that I do with some of the songs that I do call my favorites. Okay, it's only rock and roll, but I like it.
Well, that's a hilarious video. I had not seen that before, but I did read about it online when I was prepping my list. And it said that none of the band members in making the video for this song, they had no idea what to do. They're like, hey, let's uh, fill a tent with bubbles and get wet. And all the band members are like, what? I don't want to ruin my clothes. So they put them in these sailor uniforms. And they said that Charlie Watts, the drummer, he practically drowned. <laughs> and you could see that they were all laughing because they're probably looking at Charlie. They're trying to stay afloat under the bubbles. Hilarious. And again, these are, these are great songs. It's just when you're making a list of top 10 or top 15, it's tough to, it's tough to put it everything. The other thing that I, that I was struck when I went in to listen to some of these songs online in the comments section, every song, even the songs were that, which I thought weren't very good. There were a lot of people saying, Oh, this is the best stone song I've ever heard. Oh, this is stones at their best. And I'm like, really? So I'm sure that every song that I'm playing, Somebody out there is going to, that's going to be their favorite Stone song. So, hey, I'm sorry if uh, I'm putting it at like number 18 and it's uh, number one in your heart. This song I, I struggled with um, where to put this one in the list. So I just took it off. And again, not a terrible song. I'm sure most people have heard of it but maybe don't know the name of the song. So the song is uh, Tumbling Dice. And when I read about it, Mick Jagger said he knew somebody, I don't know if it was at the record label or he met somebody in passing who I guess was a bingo player or a card player of some type. And he didn't know a lot about cards and he's writing a song about tumbling dice or gambling. And so from just talking to her for an hour, he was able to learn enough about the terminology and in card playing to create the lyrics for the song. So we're going to go right into that now. Tumbling Dice by the Stones. And that was in 1972.
right. So uh, that was Tumbling Dice. Now, those are the songs that I, I just couldn't fit them on my list. Originally, I was going to go with a top 10. And I realized I wasn't going to be able to get all the songs that I thought were really good into 10. Oh, I'm having so much fun. Oh, this is without a doubt the best insurance conference ever. Yeah, are you having fun, Kevin? I'm having so much fun. This is, <laughs> this is the best night ever. I'm DJ Dale Simbersky, and I'm here to ensure you all have a good time. <laughs> so funny. This guy's hilarious. I hope you're having a great conference, and I hope you're ready to karaoke. Oh my God, we, we all have to karaoke. I, I'd be way too nervous. I mean. Oh, Roger Caputo. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of well faith. Kevin, if you think that you can do better, why don't you get up there? Well, because I have terrible stage fright. Don't be a jerk, Sandy. <laughs> He's not even trying. He's doing the YMCA dance now. <laughs> Frank, no offense, but there's a new Mick Jagger. Uh, not taken. He's amazing. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of well faith. Oh, quiet, you guys. You're ruining it. Sympathy for the devil! Sympathy for the devil! I'm not sure who you're watching, Kevin, but that guy has the moves like Jagger. Sympathy for the devil! Sympathy for the devil! So good! Those aren't the right lyrics. No, they're not. Those lyrics are better. Sympathy for the devil! Sympathy for the devil! They're not better. Yeah, yeah they are better. And I'm starting to think that that guy might be better than the real Mick Jagger. <laughs>
Yeah, that was uh, Mick Taylor on guitar. Keith Richards uh, starts off the song with this. The um, solo at the end was Mick Taylor. And you can read about it online. They supposedly didn't know that this was being recorded and they just decided to jam as a group. And that was Bobby Keys on sax. And he'll be in several of the songs that I'm going to be playing. He's just a great, great saxophone player. And on organ was Billy Preston, who also played with the Beatles. And Billy Preston was the writer of You Are So Beautiful, which was performed by Joe Cocker. So it's amazing how these are all intertwined because uh, Nicky Hopkins, he played the piano on You Are So Beautiful. And he's also another Stones regular. That last song, Can't You Hear Me Knocking, that was 1970 they recorded it, and it was released in 71. This next song was released in 1974, Time Waits for No One. Let's go right into it. Wait for me. Time waits for 
no one and it won't wait for me. I'm content down a building on this floor, a woman's face. Hours are like diamonds, don't let them wait. No one, no favors has he. Time waits for no one, and he won't wait for me. To their passing years, till their fame everlasting. Here it comes, chopping and reaping. Here and there, they're cheating. Time waits for no man, and it won't wait for me. Yes, time waits for no one, and it won't wait for me.
That was uh, Mick Taylor again on guitar and uh, Nicky Hopkins on piano. He's incredible. The guy's just incredible. When somebody makes something look easy, you know that they're a master at what they're doing. But the reason I included that song besides those two guys having great solos and not just solos, but playing on that song. The, um, when I listened to the song, as I was going through to create my list, the first part of the song, it reminded me of the Verve as a group. They had all their royalties taken away because it was deemed that they had uh, copied one of the Stones songs and it was in court for like 10 or 15 years, long time. And they finally were released from that and we were able to start collecting royalties. And Mick Jagger's like, yeah, that wasn't us. That was our former manager. And we're glad he, he got released and he's collecting his royalties. It reminds me of how, you know, music, you only have so many notes to play, right? Only so many chords. And so it's inevitable that certain songs are going to sound alike. And it also goes into influences. So the beginning of that song, I don't know if you guys remember Midnight Oil. They were a group back in the 80s from Australia. And the way Mick Jagger was singing and the way that the composition was going, it reminded me of a Midnight Oil song. And so you could see the influences that the Stones have had on other groups, knowingly or not knowingly, as well as the Power Station, which was a group in the 80s as well. They definitely sound a little bit like this song as well. You have to wonder, okay, well, you know, what makes a song great then? And obviously, in my, this is just my opinion, you can see the transformation over time, how Mick Jagger, Mick Jagger really had, became the front man of the Stones. And on a, a few songs coming up, I'm going to show some video of him. And he's just, he's incredible. He's incredible. I mean, he is a showman. And he's, not to say the other guys aren't great, but uh, the front man definitely has a great influence. Okay, so this next song, again, didn't make my list, but I'm including it because it's a great song, but also it features Nicky Hopkins again. So I'm going to get right into that right now. And this song is, I think, from the early 70s again, if I had to guess, 71. It's called uh, Loving Cup. In front of the 
great song great song yeah it's not easy compiling these lists like i said before that that's uh i mean well that's not a you know a pop pop chart hit i mean you the musicians on that are just incredible you've got um bobby keys again nicky hopkins mick taylor keith richards mick jagger it says here the uh the trumpet and the trombone are both played by jim price and then Jimmy Miller is one of their producers, and he used to get in there and play a lot of the percussion instruments. In this one, he was playing the maracas and I guess a steel drum as well. Incredible. Live long and prosper. <laughs> 